So um, one of the biggest mistakes most women make here in Nigeria when it comes to marriage is they see marriage from an emotional point of view. Most women, before they get into something as sensitive, as lifelong, because marriage is a lifelong contract which you are entering, and it will not be good that you enter into something which you expected for it to last for many years. Then all of a sudden, you go into it within five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is within five years it collapses. It, it collapses. So it's not something. Marriage is, is not something to just jump into. As a woman, and and the truth is, we have to be honest to ourselves. If a marriage it breaks down, it will affect the woman more, because we now live in a society whereby, where, if a woman answers a divorcee, it tends to raise a lot of questions, especially for men who are trying to, to marry her after she must have divorced. So it raises a lot of questions and puts dents on your own name because people will be like, what happened to her first marriage? So to you as the woman, marriage is more important. So to you as, as the woman, marriage should be more of Marriage should the the marriage lasting should be very very much important to you. That's the truth. We live in a cultural society. We live in Nigeria, a cultural, a very cultural and traditional society. This is not like the Western countries where you can divorce, where you can divorce three times and nobody cares. Here is Nigeria, a very cultural society. So as I was saying, the biggest problem these days is that women tend to see marriage from an emotional point of view, from an emotional perspective, a guy comes to you and says, I want to marry you. Just because you, you know that this guy has money, you immediately jump into marriage with him. You won't ask yourself certain critical questions which will enable marriage to last. Because the major aim of anybody who is going to marriage, especially for the woman, is for the marriage to last. Nobody is going into a marriage to stay there for five years and, and come out. The major aim of anybody both the man and the woman, is for it to last for as long as possible. But we now have a culture where majority of people who are married these days end up in divorce. In fact, statistically speaking, 50%, over 50% of marriages in today's world, especially in the Western countries, end in divorces. And most, and 70 to 90% of the time, the divorces are initiated by the women. So as a woman, the marriage should be more important to you because if the marriage doesn't work, it will affect you more. If the marriage becomes toxic, it will affect you more. And that is why most of the time it is women who are filing for divorce because the marriage affects them more. So as a woman, you should not be entering into a marriage which you will enter and tomorrow you are out of it. So what are those critical questions that you have to ask yourself? Before you get into marriage with a man, before you marry, before you agree to marry a man. Number one is, which is like the most common question women ask, which is, can he provide for me? And this is the biggest mistake most women make. Once they ask themselves this question, can this man provide for me? If the answer is yes, they immediately jump into marriage. They ignore every other thing which they should have checked for. Or every other question which they should have asked. Can he provide for me? Even a madman can provide for you and still marry you. So, a man's ability to provide for you should not be the only criteria or the only requirements or the only specification which if a man meets, then he, he's okay for you to, to marry him. That should not be the only requirement. This is just like the first one. Now, the next question as a girl you need to ask yourself is, Does this man respect me? There are so many women today who are married to men who don't respect them. Just because the man has money, they jumped into that marriage without asking themselves, does this man respect me? Does this man respect those around him? Because if a man doesn't respect those closest to him, if a man doesn't... I've been in a situation whereby a man, a girl, knew that this man 
she was about to marry, have no regard for even his mom. Yes, this guy doesn't have much respect for his mother. And you're about to marry somebody like that. A man who doesn't respect his own mother. Is it now you he's going to respect? As long as a man doesn't have respect for you and for those closest to him. Because a man can fake that he respects you just simply to marry you or simply to get you into his bed. But if you check very well, as a gear, you need to observe a man very well before you enter into something as critical, sensitive, and lifelong as marriage. Marriage should be treated as a serious business. Else, as you enter into it, that's how you jump out of it. You need to observe the person you are about to marry very well. This is the problem with most women. Most women don't observe them, the men that come to them with marriage. They don't observe them. They just check, does he have money? They jump into it. They won't check these critical factors. Does this man respect those closest to him? Because if he respects those closest to him, then that means he can respect me. If he respects women in general, then this, this man can respect me. Because a man who sees women as a, a man who doesn't have much respect for women will never respect you as his wife. In fact, he's even going to disrespect you more, especially if he has money. So you need to ask yourself those critical questions. Does this man respect women? And does he respect me? And does he respect those closest to him? That's basically the, one of the most important questions you need to ask yourself. The next question is, what is the temperament of this man? Some of you marry men who are silent killers. Yes, I'll use that word. Men who have anger issues. Probably at the beginning stage of the relationship, he was hiding it. But with time, you start seeing signs. Probably small, you did a very little thing, which any man who, you know, who is reasonable or who had better temperament could just overlook or just warn you about it and, you know, it would be cool. But this man, you start shouting. Like, there's a way you look at somebody's face. I, I know that this one, this one has a lot of anger in, in him. Women don't look for these things. They just say that if a man has money, it's okay. You need to ask yourself, what is the temperament of this man? Because, like it or not, most of these women who die in abusive marriages, the truth is that the abusiveness of that man, the beatings from that man, it did not start that day that they died. That's the truth. It didn't start that day that they died. It started years, months before that time. And in most of the cases, with these women also saw the signs before they even married the man. But they were like, after the marriage is going to change. People with anger issues, it takes only the grace of God for them to change. Yes. Especially if they are adults. Because for someone to have anger issues, that means it began when he was probably a kid or a teenager or uh, still in his youth. So you have a man who is that something years, who is suffering from anger issues and you think that he's going to change overnight simply because he married you? No. Probably if he's still in his 20s, then you'll be like, okay, well, by the time he's 30, he'll be more mature, he'll change. But to a man who is that something is, who is asking for a hand in marriage, who is trying to marry you, he has anger, issue, anger issues, and you are still planning to marry him. He can't control his temperament. He has an explosive temperament. And you are contemplating to marry him. Some of, the, some of you girls are the reason for the problems you are facing marriage. Because you don't observe your man very well. You don't observe the men who come to ask for your hand in marriage very well. You just jump into it simply because they have money. That is the fourth question which you need to ask yourself is does this man want me as much as I want him? The truth is this advice goes both ways. Or this, this thing I'm about to say now goes both ways. One of the worst things that can happen to a man or a woman is falling in love or being committed or marrying or being in a relationship with someone who doesn't want her or want him as much as you want that person. You can't marry somebody who, who doesn't love you as much as you love them and you, you think you'll be happy in that marriage. You can't be happy because already that person 
doesn't want you as much as you want him, which basically puts you in a very disadvantageous position. Because the, the guy or the gear couldn't care any less because he doesn't want you as much as you want him. Some of you girls enter into a marriage and getting to marriage with men who don't really care much about you guys. He just wants to, he just wants to marry. He just needs a wife. And he jumped into marriage with him. You will suffer. That is basically the raw truth. You will suffer. So any man you are planning to marry, this advice, this video is specifically for women. But guys can take this advice also. Any guy you are trying to marry, make sure this guy loves you, likes you, finds you attractive as much as you find him. So, so that the marriage will not, will not be one-sided. Because the worst thing that can happen to anybody in the name of love is getting to a one-sided relationship or marriage. You will suffer. That's because the truth. You will suffer. Because you will you'll be doing things You'll be putting the effort, and the person will not be putting the, the same level of effort. One of the reasons why most women suffer in their marriages is because they want this marriage to work by all means. One of the reasons why most men suffer in their relationship is because they want this relationship to work by all means. When it is obvious that this girl or this guy doesn't want you as much as you want him. Love, marriage, relationship is not by force. It's not that you are single than suffering or being in a relationship that the person you are, you claim to love doesn't love you as much as you love him because you suffer. That's basically the truth of the matter. There are no two ways about it. Love has to be uh, a matter of 50-50. Like a matter of 50-50. In fact, it's not even 50-50. Love, relationship, marriage has to be a matter of 100%, 100%. You bring your all to the table. I bring my all to the table. Not you are, you, are, you are giving me half effort and you expect me to put in full effort. There will be a lot of problems in that marriage, in that relationship, in, in that love affair. So make sure you love who loves you. Make sure you like who likes you. And make sure you are attracted to who is attracted to you. So they won't love you out of pity. Which basically means you keep suffering. And nobody wants to be in a marriage where they will be begging for love. So women are, are in marriages where there's no love. The man is tired of them. The man is... The man, ah, Haba. You girls should be doing better. You girls should be doing better. Marry. Before you marry, ask yourself these critical questions. Money should, should not be the only motivation to marriage. But the truth is, majority of you girls, that's the truth. Most girls marry out of hunger. So in, an, in, in as much as I'm saying all these things, I know, I know that at the end of the day, most of you girls will still be marrying for money. Because these days, most girls are marrying for money. That's why they, they are ready to marry any man, even if he's, even if he's a woman. Even, even if, see, uh, most girls eh, are ready to marry a well-known woman beater. Like, a, a, a woman beater is popular in Nigeria. Most women are ready to marry him as, as long as he has money. That's tell you how, how uh, fragmented or fractured most of these women's brains are. For women, for most of the women, money means everything to them. And that is why most of them will keep entering into the wrong marriages with the wrong men, who will probably keep maltreating them, beating them, or frustrating their lives. Because no matter what I preach today on this video, most of these girls will still be married men for money. They won't, they will be blind enough, they won't be uh, logical enough, rational enough, to ask themselves these critical questions I've talked about in this video. They are, for them, marriage is all about poverty and education. They are married to change their financial stories. They are married to change their financial lives. So that is why they will keep making the mistake of assuming that once a man has money, it's over. It's okay for me. It doesn't matter if, if he will kill me. It doesn't matter if, if, he, will, if <laughs> he will make my life miserable in that marriage. They just jump into the marriage simply because the man has money. And it's very bad, it's very pathetic, it's very uh, it's very sad. And in as much as we in as in as much as someone like me we keep putting out such videos as this online, the truth remains that most of these girls they will never listen. Women hardly listen. Women are good at deceiving themselves, thinking that they are wise, thinking that they are smart. Why can't you take such good advices? No. 
They won't. All they see is money. And they wonder why, why they keep entering into the wrong marriages.